of you have a grandmother, or are you a grandmother, or have you ever had a grandmother? Raise your hand. Well, tonight, the story about my dear friend Linda's life through quilting, her journey through quilting, um, she's going to tell us to us through a story, a beautiful story of her grandma's love for her. And um, I've had the pleasure of knowing Linda for 22 years now. We met when we first both moved to Holliston. And um, I have seen her travel this journey. And I've since moved away to Gloucester, but I came back today to be here tonight and introduce her and to hear her tell her story to all of you. So with no further ado, this is fiber artist extraordinaire. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. It was not exactly what I expected to hear. My grandmother told me, Linda, I'm going to the nursing home. This is our last Tuesday morning together. But I want you to share your talent with the world. You see, I had been coming to my grandmother's house for 10 years, almost every Tuesday. What was I going to do next Tuesday? As I drove home, I thought, I only know how to play show and tell with my grandmother, have a cup of tea, and play Scrabble. I don't know how to share quilts with the world. Well, time passed, and somehow I was inspired by those words. So I did start a business called Inspired Layers. I have a website, inspiredlayers.com. I teach at the Holliston Senior Center. And now I produce a cable television show, A Quilter's Touch, on Holliston Cable Access Television. So I thank you all for coming here tonight to celebrate a grandmother's love. Would you like to see the first quilt that I ever made? Do you think it's hanging on the wall? Cotton, cotton polyester, print of uh, solid color fabrics. I bought a piece good store. I cut out every piece with my Ginger shears. I used the cereal box, cardboard from a cereal box for the pattern. And if it wasn't for a friend of mine who's here tonight, I would not have matched all those points that well. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few holes because I didn't know anything about stitch length at the time. And there's no binding, because I didn't even know what a binding was. I just took the fabric around the back and rolled it over and sit down in the front. It looked good enough for me. My son loved it. And these holes are really great, because that's you know what you do with those. You put your Legos, the, the special ones, and the connect pieces that are rare in them. So when it goes around in the laundry, you just <laughs> but now I really love it because my kids, 17 and 24, still think it's the warmest blanket in the wintertime and they cuddle with it on the couch. So it's the memories of the quilt, not the quality <laughs> that I really like. Well, every quilter can learn a new technique and learn to share their quilts. I would like to share tonight a short version of a talk that I give about how I learned to quilt, how I ventured out of my closet, and how now I reach out to others. So I learned to quilt by doing. I answered an ad in 1997 and called a friend, the name on the, the ad, because they were looking for people to make a quilt for the Holliston Newcomers Club. They wanted to raffle it off. 
So I said, I've, I've sewn my whole life. I made one quilt, but I wouldn't call it a success. But I can learn. I know I can. She said, oh, sure, come on down. We're meeting on Thursday night at her house. She gave me the address. I went, and I met the most lovely group of women. I was hooked. We were going to do a quilt with stars on it. Well, I thought I would learn how to do the star pattern. There's so many star patterns. I didn't have a clue. This is the quilt that we raffled off. And I, that was my very, very, very first real block. <laughs> in, and it was raffled off in 1998. It was all hand quilted, too. So I got to learn a little bit about hand quilting. Then I started to watch TV. There was a show on called Simply Quilts with Alex Anderson. And she might show how to construct a block. And behind her, there'd be a completed quilt. So I would study the show, learn how to make the block, go through what fabric I had. And I'd make 36 of them or 45 of them. And I'd twist them and turn them, and, and I'd put them together. So I had tons of charity quilts. I made a quilt a week for two years and gave them all away to charity. Then I took a class with Cindy Needham. And she taught me how to take some linen, and that's a handkerchief, and then a um, dresser scarf, put them onto Sashamoose silk, and free motion quilt. I loved it. Well, after Grammy died, it was January of 2007, I ventured out a bit further. I went to new quilting groups. On Tuesday morning, we met. And I went to bigger shows. So this quilt here, The Gift of Friendship, is just half square triangles, blues and whites. There was a group of us, all from different towns, and we met at Ellie's house on Tuesday morning. It was a new quilting community for me. And we had been meeting for a few years, and Jerry and Kim died of cancer. So we said, we need to do a project, bring us all together. We need to get busy on a project. So we came up with these half square triangles. We made a whole bunch from our stash, and then we shared them with the other people in the group. When we got them back, each one of us made something different, a table runner, a tree skirt, anything we wanted. And this is the quilt that I made. So I don't look at it as a quilt as something to cover you and keep you warm necessarily. It's a gift of friendship. I look at that and I remember all the hours and the conversations we have and the people who shared their gift with me. Then I went to um, the Mancuso Quilt Show, which is a really big quilt show. It was up in New Hampshire. And I looked at the quilts that were really big and had the great big ribbons. And they had micro stippling on them. And they had some jewels on them. So I went to the vendor mall, and I said, I want to buy a piece of fabric, and I'm going to try that micro stippling, put some jewels on. So I went home, and that's what I did. So the butterfly quilt, way down there up high, sort of in a dark spot, <laughs> is my miniature of what I saw at the Mancuso quilt show. So if you go over after this talk and look at it, you'll see that the background looks further away because I've done some really tiny stippling in there, trying not to cross over the, the threads. And I changed the color, like the green background. It's batik dyed. I used green thread and then I transitioned over to yellow, but then I kind of liked the yellow thread on the green, and so when it got to go to the pinks and the blues and the greens, I kind of went green on blue and blue on green because I kind of liked the the change there. So I'm learning a lot about color as I'm challenging myself. Then I went to the Worcester Sewing Expo with my friend Deb, who's here. And we wa went by the Bone Ash booth. And they had this bonding agent and a pressing sheet. And they were doing crafty things, stamping, gold foiling. And they used this powder form of glue and I thought, well, that's neat, because I don't like sticky glues. And I won't have to get so messy, and my needle won't have to go through gunk and break. 
So why don't we take our favorite fabric in the whole wide world, which is batiks, doesn't have a right side, wrong side, cut it up into little confetti size, and sprinkle some glue on it and see what happens. So I think it was like the very next day, we got our muffin tins out, we met at Debbie's house, and we were just, had our Monet moment, and we were into impressionistic art, and we were fusing it down and seeing what would happen. So that skiff quilt, way down the end there, it has a boat on it, was the second quilt. Debbie has the first quilt that we did together. That's the second quilt that we did together. So every now and then I feel like I have a confetti moment, like I wanted to do a horse, and I did, and I went to Italy and I came back and I had to do a confetti quilt. It's not from a picture, it's not from anything, it's just I wanted the trees, I wanted the grapes, I, I just wanted things that I remember from going to Italy. And so that's the quilt, that little tiny long one is the one I did when we went to Tuscany, Italy. There are other group quilts that we did. Um, the quilt season, the one that says quilt season at the top, was a row robin. So I joined Thimble Pleasures Quilt Guild. And so each person would do a row, and then I figured out how to put them together the way that was pleasing to me. But what a gift. I mean, there was no pattern, and one person didn't necessarily see. They saw what was done before them, but they didn't know what was coming. And so it was a great experience to have a gift from new friends along the way. And then the house quilt, the top one, it's Grammy's house, that white house. If you look closely, that's eight pieces put together. So eight people worked on that quilt. I did the doorway and part of the stairs. It's two rows of four. What, we, what I did was took that picture of Grammy's house, sent it to Staples, and they have a computer program, and they'll spit out eight by tens. They'll cut your picture into eight by ten. So then you give a slice to seven other people. And then two months later, they bring them back. And you learn all these different techniques that you didn't know before. So I met new friends, and I learned new techniques. So after I accomplished that, my friend Cindy was having a special birthday. And so I did her house. And it was just so much fun looking at the greenery and putting in things that really aren't there, but I know she would love in her dream. But even the light post, there's a little crystal under some plastic there. I use materials, not all cottons, just whatever I had. That, <laughs> that was a skirt pleater that I used to do that to make it look like shingles. So there was another girl in our guild who released a pattern on how to make a t-shirt quilts. So I bought her pattern, and I read it cover to cover. So the first quilt, t-shirt quilt I made is Maria's quilt, when Maria graduated from high school, my niece. She, it was squares and had cornerstones. It was very square with cornerstones. <laughs> so I am trained as an engineer. So you learn the foundations, and then you infuse that creativity that's just busting to get out of you. And every t-shirt quilt that I've done since then doesn't look anything like the first one, but I learn the technique. And that's what's so great about quilting, that you just learn these techniques, and then you add a little bit of your own personality, and every quilt comes out different. Because never have I seen a quilt hanging with a pattern right next to it so that you can judge and make sure that everything in the original pattern is done in that quilt. So Tim's quilt is out in the hall, and it's the first time I used glow-in-the-dark thread. He had very black, navy blue, solid t-shirts, but he played this game called Magic the Gathering. So I tried to make, it's a deck of cards, and I tried to make what the deck of cards looks like. The corner circles are from a tie-dye shirt that we made on a family reunion week. So then um, 
So that's the t-shirt quilts. The next step for me was to find my voice and train my thoughts. So I've done all this work and I've done a lot of quilts, but I didn't know how to share them publicly. So I joined Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a wonderful place to get feedback and to grow in learning how to speak. There's um, brochures that look like this that you can take and find a, a group near you. It's so worthwhile. It taught me how to speak publicly without having my heart race too, too fast. And I use the sequential way of teaching someone how to make something when I teach at the Halston Senior Center. It's a great place to listen to the people there, that little quilting circle. They would say, I bought this pattern and I bought this ballypop. For those of you who don't know what a ballypop is, it's 40 strips of batik fabric. Or a Tonga tree, 40 strips. There's two of 20 colors. And they felt like they were wasting fabric. So what I did was I developed a pattern called the Mango Mix, and it's down there on the corner. And that one effectively and efficiently uses all 40 strips in a valley pot. It looks very complicated. There's two borders. The inside one is the navy blue one over there, and then the outside one has those little rectangles. But it looks harder than it is. It's very simple. The other thing we did at the Senior Center was this just around the curve um, placemats because they wanted to do curves with no pins, no stress, and no puckers. So I developed a pattern that you can do curves with no pins, no stress, and no puckers. And I demonstrated it, and they all made placemats. I did that with my friend Barbara. Well, that led to someone being in the senior center class calling the cable station saying, she's got a nice voice, why doesn't she do a quilting TV show? So they called me up and I had not a clue how to produce a television show. And they said, don't worry about it, we'll teach you. Free classes. <laughs> so I heard my grandmother's voice. So I had to try. I've done 36 shows and there's a free handout on the table with all the topics that I've covered. I love doing this because I can help people, who are new designers who just come out with a new tool. I had Debbie Went with her brilliant bindings. I had Sue Pellin with her Leaves Galore template. And they actually came and were guests on the show. Then there were other people who didn't want to come on the show. I met an author of Cut the scraps. If you have um, scraps and you want to make quilts, this is an awesome book. She gave me the book, autographed it, and said, send me an email, tell me what you think. Well, I read it cover to cover. And then I sent her an email and gave her 10 reasons why I love this book. I said, I'm definitely doing a show, which I did, and that quilt right there is in this book. So she asked me if I wanted her to send me, if I wanted her to send me the samples. And I said, no, I have to make my own quilt. Because <laughs> I had to test everything out. While I was making the quilt, I came across this so easy guide. So in her book, she tells you to mark a line and then sew a quarter of an inch to one side and a quarter inch to the other side. If you use this sew easy guide and put this on your presser foot, there's no time spent marking anything. It's really clever and it speeds it up. So I was able to make that in no time at all. The smaller one called 25 Spools is the one I actually made during the television show. And the great thing about all of these shows is if you have an iPad or a computer at home, they're all avail available online. You watch them when you want to. I also made a pattern called Linda's Clothesline Tote, and I did a Ballet Bags class online. In order to put these leather handles on, um, it's kind of hard to go through the front and the back leather pieces. 
So I just found a new product called Poke a Dots. And it's these little red rubber that are like an eighth inch thick and you put it right on your finger that you push your needle with and then you won't poke your finger with the needle. I love it. So I have a whole list of shows at the table in the back and I like to reach out if there's anyone here who has designed a pattern, has written a book, or has a tool, I, I'd be glad to hear about it and test it out. And who knows, it might show up on my show. So how do quilters learn and share? I'm sure everyone goes about it a different way. But I started with show and tell with my grandmother. Then I ventured out to quilt shows and classes. I met a lot of wonderful people along the way, mentors, Toastmasters group, quilters, quilt shop owners that helped me. So I hope you'll tune in online to one of the shows and enjoy the stories that I have to share. Let me end with this thought. The love and encouragement from my grandmother gives me the creative energy to quilt, to quilt, to quilt, and now to share my stories. So thank you for coming. If you would like me to share any stories with your group, I'd be glad to. You can talk to me after this. So just enjoy the show. And thanks for coming. Have something to eat.